This is Circuit de la Sarf, known around the racing world simply as Le Mans. Since 1923, this track in Western France has been home to the world's original 24-hour endurance race. Coupled with the likes of the legendary Indianapolis 500 and the Monaco Grand Prix, the 24 Hours of Le Mans is widely regarded as the world's most prestigious endurance race and it forms a part of Motorsport's treble crown. The first race was held on the outskirts of Le Mans back in 1906 and was called the French Grand Prix, the first Grand Prix of its kind. It was run on public roads with one lap of the circuit stretching just over 103 kilometers. Then, in 1922, the secretary of the ACO, Georges Durand, was given 100,000 francs to facilitate and devise a new race for the region. Durand took this as an opportunity to stage something completely unheard of, a 24-hour endurance race that would push the modern race car to its limits where manufacturers would prove their worth to the world. Durand's original Circuit de la Sarf stretched 17.2 kilometers and was entirely comprised of public roads. It ventured into the city of Le Mans and stretched to a tight hairpin before venturing on to the eight kilometer long Mulsanne Strait. In 1929, the hairpin was bypassed due to safety concerns with expanding town suburbs and safety was always a thing that changed and progressed the racetrack over the years. In 1932, the track as we know began to take shape. That was prompted by the construction of a new 1.5 kilometer bypass running from the start finish area to the new entrance of the Mulsanne Strait, the now infamous Tatar Rouge Corner. This section featured the fast first curve that remains today and what would later become the location of the famous Dunlop Bridge. Now back in 1923, it was a field of 33 drivers that competed in the inaugural event and their average speed, 57 miles an hour. By 1956, the field had increased to 49 cars and they were running at nearly twice the average speed at 104 miles an hour. As the cars became quicker and the competition rose, the track continued to evolve. For example, in 1972, the final section of the track was completely reconfigured to bypass the dangerous Maison Blanche kink. This included the addition of the Porsche curves and the revised Ford chicanes to slow the cars on the run from Anage Corner to the start finish line. These features remain today. One of the then traditional aspects of the race was the Le Mans start. Drivers would stand across to the track where the cars were parked and then at the drop of the French Tricolore, they ran to their car, climbed in, fired the engine, engaged first gear and pulled away in a cloud of exhaust and burned rubber. Not surprisingly, this was discontinued for safety reasons as drivers would either rush to buckle their seatbelts, they didn't even bother buckling them at all. Dan Gurney, who together with AJ Foyt won the 1967 race, famously recounted using his knees to steer his 4 GT Mark II on their opening lap at speeds well above 200 miles an hour whilst he fastened his seatbelt. Since 1971, Le Mans has reverted to the more traditional rolling start used throughout endurance racing today. Le Mans will ever be known as a proving ground for car manufacturers and a lifelong dream for drivers. It continues to rank as the pinnacle of endurance racing that inspires similar races to take shape around the world. Things like the 24 hours of the Nürburgring, or the 24 hours of Spa, or the Rolex 24 at Daytona. But there will only ever be one Le Mans. Experience Le Mans on iRacing.